up everybody welcome to my third video and welcome to my channel if you're new there's lots going on i'm tired as hell but it's been worth it lots of fun stuff coming on i'm gonna have some promo codes in the description for a couple things um i'm just you know trying to help people save a couple bucks i'm not making anything out of these but maybe in the future i might have some sort of win for myself it wouldn't be a bad thing um, for my last video, I had a viewer ask me about my soil. He asked me a few things, but more specifically, I'm going to be addressing my soil. Um, I don't feel like one video I would be able to completely cover everything that's in there. I'm going to... Um, I don't think I'd be able to cover everything that's in my soil because my soil is... It's simple and complex somehow. It's simple, it's just soil, but it's complex because I'm trying to achieve what Mother Nature achie achieves somehow. I'm not, but I'm trying. So I've learned with uh, salt-based nutrients, it's kind of like force-feeding your plants, giving them uh, vitamins every day, like you would be taking vitamins. It's not you eating food, you're not getting your, uh, your di diverse balance of food. You're, you're just getting the same type of vitamin every time. Vitamins come from different things, nutrition comes from different things. You can get nitrogen from many different sources. Um, so I'm starting to learn that organics is what I would consider to be better. That's just a personal opinion. Not everyone's going to agree with that. But uh, when you're growing organic, you're trying to replicate Mother Earth. And to me, that's the right way. But anyways, on to my soil. Um, when I do my soil, I don't know if I do it in a unique way or if anybody else does it this way. I I will pre-mix my soil in 16-gallon totes. And generally, I use 5-gallon pots. I will, uh, in the tote, I will add in some all-purpose, some power bloom, some uh, perlite, some myco. Um... I got some over here, some bone meal, some glacial rock dust, some alfalfa meal, some kelp meal, and some mineralized phosphate. Now the ratios of those will change depending on what I'm doing, what plant I'm growing, and what I think it's going to be needing. Not every plant wants the same diet. Some plants are more nitrogen hungry, some are. So what I have is the ability to customize my, what I would refer to as my all-purpose blend. And I'm getting to the point where I can customize my power bloom blend. And uh, that's just using, you know, like regular Gaia nutrients, but I'm making my own mix, which I find to be a little more personalized. You get better results, I find. Um, when you're using organics, there's a lot that goes on put in a kind of simple way like he, microbiology is everything if you're growing organics and you're not promoting microbiology you're not really growing organics because the microbiology is the organics without that you don't really you might as well be using salt based at that point I add uh, a lot of microbes to my my soil I use um, one called microbe mats it has a bacteria, four bacteria in it. I, uh, I only recently got it, so I'm still learning about this, but it's essentially going to open up the pathways for the plant to be able to pick up more of the nutrients that it needs to flower and grow nice, nicely in flower. Um, then there's things like fish shed from fish head farms. Um, they have an awesome product. It just made its way up into Canada and uh, I got to use it for the first time and I'm blown away by it within my first two weeks of using it I noticed a boost in growth that wasn't there before it was easily attributed to the fish shit <laughs> so basically the way I do my soil is I mix it in a base mix I let it cook I pot up my soils three to four weeks later I top dress them with generally a vegetation mix because they're still in vegetation 
as they prepare to flower if they're auto flowers or as I prepare to flip them if they're photo periods. Um, I kind of change the nutrient schedule to a more bloom specific one. If you notice on, a lot of you guys will know this, but a lot of people might not. These are your base nutrients. I don't know if I'm gonna have it right, but NPK, it's backwards when I'm looking at it. Um, those are like your base nutrients. You're always gonna need those and other ones, but those are like probably some of the most important. The, uh, the second two numbers are more for flower. The first two numbers are more for vegetation. To sum it up, that's like a very, very, very simplified version. Um, yeah, then as my soil uh, and my plant grows, I change my, my top dress, my amendments, what I'm feeding it, to, to better suit the plant's needs. I don't want to be giving a lot of nitrogen, the first number, when, uh, when it's late into flower because it's just going to cause the it's going to cause me issues. The plant doesn't need that. It's not eating it. It's going to build up. It's going to be nitrogen excess in that case. So, uh, basically I'm get, slowly getting into like my own custom blends. I'll get more into that in the future, but right now I'm just covering what I do to my soil. Um, during my grows, I'll be using microbe teas, molasses teas, uh, kelp teas, like just different types of teas. Honestly, there's so many and so many ways to do them that the best way I think is to just kind of go and read what you're looking for, what you like, what sounds good. Just look at research teas. If you have questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to cover them. Um, I don't do a ton of teas, just kind of what I know works for me, but I'm willing to, you know, research and help some people out. So Basically, after my grow and my soil is done, you're left with your root ball and a mass of soil. What do you what do you do with it? And organics, you know, you put a lot of stuff into that, and is it still good? So, it is still good. Everything's still good. You just have to find the right use for it. That soil can be reused. You just got to get it out of the pot. You got to get the roots out of it, and you got to refresh it, kind of. So. There's a couple different ways that you could do that. You, I, I let mine dry for about two weeks. Let all moisture escape it after the plant's been cut. And uh, I dry it for two weeks, and then I pull the root ball out of it and throw it into like you know a big token and break it all up. But I try not to break the roots. I want to get as much root out of it as possible, just in case there was any issue with it. And then uh, you can either use like a recharge pack. Um, it's like a pre-made pack, you know. It's got all kinds of microbes and nutrients and it essentially refreshes your soil or if you're using something such as like a dry amendment what I have you you can just add what you what you knew was lacking or you can give a light re-amendment even though you're kind of building new soil you knew that you know your plant didn't have any nitrogen deficiency you knew that your plant didn't have potassium issues or you knew that it, it was lacking calcium so you know like if you know these things and you pay attention to your plant maybe keep some notes it can help you save money and it can help you like in the greater scheme of things notes to make mother nature or to even replicate it or to have like a fraction of it that's that's like no work that's like a lot of power to have for taking notes. Um, that's if you understand what actually, or have an idea of what is actually going on in that soil. So take notes. Remember what was going on with your last batch of soil, what was going on with your last batch of, of, of plants. Like, just know those things. I, I suggest that, like, I think you guys might benefit from it. Sorry, my back is sore. Um... Molasses is a popular one, blackstrap, unsulfured molasses is what I use, has to be unsulfured, doesn't have to be blackstrap. Um, it feeds the microbes in the soil, even if you're using salt paste, there's probably still microbes in your soil, feed them, the plant might like it. Um, I till my soil because I like to have a nice loose top to it, I just find it easier to water it and it looks nicer and the plant likes it and it avoids compacting soil and um, compacting soil is just not a good thing all around for your plant if you can avoid it avoid it um, 
I always monitor my pH into my soil. I don't really have to worry about it too much, as long as I know that I have something in there to buffer my pH. So, like, imagine, if you don't know what pH is, I'll probably cover it in another video, let me know. Like, But if, if you do know what pH is, imagine pH is like a window, and but to buffer it means you can open that window more. And what that window does is makes it so the plant can reach out and grab nutrients. Now with that window open more, the plant can reach out and grab those nutrients easier. And that's essentially what a buffer does. Um, since I use things in my soil to buffer it, there's a couple different ways or things you could do. Uh, I don't really have to worry about my soil so much. Uh, I just pH my water that goes into it and I'm pretty well happy with that. I don't have too many pH issues often at all so that's another thing too is like monitor the types of issues if you, you have like if you have nutrient issues get more into nutrients if you have pest issues get more into pests if you have uh root or sprouting germination issues learn more about that like the information's here it's out there pay attention to what you need to know uh the best products I actually quoted it in my in my book because that's what was said to me is the best products. <coughs> I don't think there is a best product. There is literally a million different ways to get the same results. Me and my girlfriend will argue all the time and we'll, we'll be like, you know, 2 plus 2 is 4 and 3 plus 1 is 4 and 1 times 4 is 4 and 8 minus 4 is 4. Like this. There's a lot of ways to get there. So find the way that works for you. Don't find somebody else's way. You likely won't end up doing it because you'll hit a roadblock and they won't be there. Or you won't be able to figure it out because that's not the way that you understand. So when people refer to a best, I don't think there's really a best in anything. Um, it's preference, point of view, how you use it. I prefer Gaia Green. I'm not sponsored by them, I get nothing from them again. I just really, really like them. I discovered them a year and a half, two years ago. And, uh, they're just a great product. I've been growing on and off for a long time. But I've only recently started using organics and it's easily better, in my opinion. Um, so best products? There's no really best products. Best organics? There's not really best organic just pay attention to where they're deriving making their ingredients from like you know there's there's good ways to get the ingredients and bad ways to get the ingredients in a sense just learn that's all i can really say that's probably why you're here right now watching this and you're doing the right thing i guess um, I think I pretty well covered my soil, microbiology, feeding the microbes, pH, watering habits is very important. Learn the weight of your pot while it's dry when you first pot it. So then when you water it, you know how much water is actually in the pot. Even, you know, if, if you're really struggling with it, maybe even scale it one time. Like when you first pot up your soil, scale the, the dry weight with the plant. Or like before the plant. And then, uh, you know, as the plant grows, obviously, you're going to have a plant on top, but water weighs a lot. So pick it up and learn that weight. It'll help you learn how to water properly. And it's just a big circle of growth. Like everything depends on each other in a sense. Again, if you do want any, if you do the best, you know, if you're the best at watering it, but you don't feed it very well, then what good is being the best at watering it. It's a cycle. Try to focus on all the corners and cover all your bases. Now, onto some of the good stuff. So, I'm gonna put some links in the description for anyone interested. We got some promo codes. I'll also have them with the links. We have uh, a promo code from Aaron at Juan Garden. Uh, I believe it was Growers Club, capital G, G-R-O-W-E-R-S. C-L-U-B. Um, again, I'll have that down in the bottom. Uh, fish it. Tom. Thomas. 
Uh, fish, fish ship. We have a promo code. It's actually Tom's. It's not ours. It's uh, T O N W. That will be down in the bottom also. I think I have everything. Let me know how you like my new intro. Uh, I was, I put a lot of thinking into stuff. You know, I look tired as fuck. I'm tired as fuck. So let me know what you guys think. You know, I want to know if this is actually working and, and and you guys are enjoying it because it's not. It's about us in a sense, not just me. Anyways, uh, I'll catch you in the next video, video 4. I'll, I don't know what I'll cover yet. Let me know what you guys are curious about. And I'll uh, see you guys then. Peace out, guys and girls. Peace out.